personal simulation method. And now uh, we have a second plenary talk of this session. This talk will be given by Professor Vrabek from uh, Technical University of Berlin. Uh, so, Yedran Vrabek, he is professor at, uh, on uh, thermodynamics and process engineering at the Technical University of Berlin, Germany, since uh, 2018. His work is, uh, um, is situated around the molecular modeling and simulation for process and, and energy engineering applications. After studying process engineering in the Ruhr University at Bochum, he also accepted his PhD there in 1996, subsequent to an interim phase working as a management consultant. He became a group leader for molecular thermodynamics at the University of Stuttgart, where he received his habilitation in 2010. Between 2009 and 2018, he was full professor uh, for thermodynamics and energy technology at the University of Paderborn, Germany. And uh, he is co-author of uh, more than 200 peer-reviewed research papers, most of which discuss different aspects of atomistic molecular modeling and simulation methods and application. He has a strong interest in high-performance computing and um, the according development for simula of simulation software. Together with co-authors, he carried out, out molecular dynamics simulations for the largest system uh, that was described on the at atomistic scale. Vrabik is active in different German and European working parties for thermodynamics as well as molecular simulations. And we uh, uh, we are working together with Professor Vrabik in the framework of topical team on um, diffusion in non-metallic non systems. Uh, and actually at this session, I see four members of this um, topical team. So uh, together with uh, Professor Vrabik and me, it is a coordinator of this team, Valentina Shevtsova, and uh, also Werner Köhler is a member of this topical team. And in the framework of this uh, project, this mix, uh, Professor Vrabik has obtained absolutely excellent uh, results on the calculations of kinetic coefficients for ternary mixture. And now I know that they already published the paper about uh, quarterly mixture. So I I am very happy to give a floor for Professor Vrabik for his uh, I'm sure very nice presentation. Thank you very much, uh, Tatiana, for the very kind introduction. I hope that you can hear me and yes, see my yes. slides. We yes, we hear you and see your yes. presentation. That is great. Yeah, my talk is going to be um, about uh, yeah diffusion mass transport in in liquid mixtures. And one must keep in mind that um, only very few experimental data are available. Uh, for binary mixtures, there is a quite substantial data set, but for ternary mixtures already, we just have information on 300 uh, ternary mixtures. And in case of quaternary mixtures, there's only 20 uh, or less than 20 quaternaries that have been uh, investigated so far. Uh, now, diffusion is known for almost 170 years. And so the question is, why is that? Why is the data situation so poor? The answer to that is that measurements are really challenging uh, and time consuming. Um, and so um, uh, the data availability is bad. Um, and uh, the reason uh, is that another problem with diffusion is that strong coupling, uh, coupling effects may occur when we have um, mixtures with three or more components. So diffusion of a single component, say component A, depends very much uh, on the behavior of the other components and not only on its own 
uh, driving force gradient. Uh, well, if you cannot measure it, then the hope would be to somehow predict it um, in the gas that may be possible to a certain extent. But if we have strongly non-ideal mixtures, in particular liquid mixtures, then uh, uh, predictions are really challenging. So what are the, the routes um, to, to get to diffusion coefficient data? Of course, experimental work as discussed, quite difficult. It requires, uh, yeah, uh, as Kassler has said, uh, 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 well, uh, noble knights yeah, in this uh, reference down here on the slide uh, to work for a long time in the lab to get to such data. Another approach is to do molecular modeling and simulation, and that is what I am going uh, to talk about today. Now, in case of diffusion, uh, one has to distinguish a bunch of different diffusion coefficient types. There are, first of all, the so-called intra-diffusion uh, coefficients, uh, also called uh, self-diffusion coefficients, and they are acting also in pure fluids, and they basically just describe the thermal propagation of molecular species without any driving force. So the propagation of that single molecule that is embedded uh, in its environment. Much more technically important um, and also more challenging are the transport diffusion coefficients. The transport diffusion coefficients play a role when real mixing occurs and when a driving force is present. You see here a simulation on the right hand side to separate it uh, uh, components and of course uh, they will uh, mix uh, if uh, there is, for example, no liquid-liquid equilibrium. Now, this mixing process uh, can be described with two different approaches, uh, two main different approaches. And the first one is the thick um, approach that you can see here. And it says that the mass flux yeah, is, uh, yeah, well, driven by a concentration gradient. And we have a constant that is giving it its magnitude. And that is the thick uh, diffusion coefficient. Now, uh, this mass transport or uh, uh, this, this, this flow uh, can also be expressed um, as a velocity difference between the velocity of the component that we look at and a reference velocity. We will later see that in mixtures with more components, this reference velocity starts to get uh, a little bit complicated. On the other side, we have the meckford stefan diffusion approach. There we are looking at mutual velocities between the components. And much more importantly, uh, the driving force is expressed in, term, uh, in case of the meckford stefan uh, approach by the chemical potential gradient and not uh, the concentration gradient. And that makes also very much sense because, uh, of course, the chemical potential is a much more fundamental property and that it is that one is the true driving force for diffusion. Now we see these two approaches here written down once again. Um, and of course, they are both valid. Um, the one just has a more appropriate uh, driving force, the chemical potential gradient. But of course, they are related. They are related uh, and directly related. So the thick diffusion coefficient in case of a binary mixture is nothing else than the maxwell stefan diffusion coefficient uh, multiplied with the so-called thermodynamic factor. And the thermodynamic factor is, as you can see here, uh, basically the relation between the chemical potential uh, and the mole fraction. And so it basically yeah, exchanges uh, this gradient here. Now, the thermodynamic factor as a property is clearly a, an entropic property. So it cannot be measured directly in the lab. <clears throat> but once we have an equation of state or a Gibbs excess energy model, we can cal calculate it. We can also access it with molecular modeling and simulation. And the property um, as a number <clears throat> tells us something about the non-ideality of a mixture. In case of an ideal mixture, like for example, benzene plus toluene, then the uh, uh, thermodynamic factor will be close to unity. Um, and when it starts deviating strongly from unity, uh, then we have a, a more pronounced non-ideality. And if it gets below zero, then we have thermodynamic instability, which means, for example, liquid-liquid phase separation. Now let us get closer to molecular modeling and simulation. Uh, molecular modeling and simulation, when we do equilibrium molecular dynamic simulation, what I'm going to talk about here today, uh, we have access to uh, the uh, uh, meckford stefan diffusion coefficient by means of the so-called Onsager coefficients, which I'm going to explain uh, in a second. <clears throat> 
Now, let me come to um, such a molecular simulation. Um, here you see a binary mixture of methanol plus benzene. Um, we have a few thousand molecules here. I think it's like five or 6,000. And what do we do? Uh, we are basically solving the equations of motion of these molecules, rotational and translational. We do that uh, by applying uh, uh, yeah, uh, the, the Newton, Newton's law, Newton's second law, um, and solve it um, in a, a numerical scheme over time. And while uh, we have these positions, velocities, forces, energies of all these molecules, we can basically derive uh, all thermodynamic properties from these movements and these additional uh, numbers. Now, let me, um, let me try to give you a very short introduction into the green Kubo formalism, uh, which uh, uh, gives us access to these transport properties. As you have seen, um, this state was in equilibrium, but equilibrium does not mean that we have a static simulation. Uh, the system is basically simply through fluctuations moving out of the equilibrium and moving back into the equilibrium. So the equilibrium is basically disturbing itself uh, by means of macroscopic fluctuations. And these macroscopic fluctuations, sorry, microscopic fluctuations, and these microscopic fluctuations uh, give us access to the transport properties. Now, Comparably easy to understand um, is the relation of the intradiffusion coefficient to the velocities of the molecules. What you see here is the expression which is uh, required uh, to get to the self-diffusion or intradiffusion coefficient. And it says basically, how is the velocity of an individual uh, uh, molecule um, uh, correlated with itself uh, uh, between two different time instances. So you see such a velocity autocorrelation function here. Of course, at the very, at very short times, um, the velocity is fully correlated with itself. But then, of course, because the molecule changes its direction um, uh, and interacts with others, uh, the correlation of its own velocity with itself uh, reduces over time, then in this case goes through a minimum, and then at long times, uh, it vanishes completely. Well, uh, the self-diffusion coefficient itself is then simply an integral of, uh, of this curve, and that's what you get here. Now let's get to the Onsager coefficients, which are the basis for the Maxwell-Stefan diffusion coefficient. They may look similar uh, at, at, at first glance, however, they are not. What you can see here is it's the average velocity of one component, how it is uh, correlated with the average velocity of the other component at some later time. So this is not an individual property, but a collective property correlating the velocities of the components as whole entities. Now, Let's get back to the diffusion coefficients. Actually, there are many different diffusion coefficients. You can see here eight um, of them um, for a binary mixture that is uh, acetone plus cyclohexane. And um, you can here see here, for example, uh, the intradiffusion coefficient of component one. And when component one is a pure fluid, then it is the self-diffusion coefficient here. And you can see here the intradiffusion coefficient as a function of composition. And when component two is a pure fluid, then it is the self-diffusion coefficient. You can go uh, on this component two to the other side. What does this mean? Well, that is the infinite dilution coefficient, which means there is a single molecule of component two um, still uh, in a mixture that basically consists only uh, of uh, acetone. Now, these two uh, lines are actually less interesting because they are uh, related to the molecular mobility. Transport diffusion coefficients are the Maxwell-Stefan diffusion coefficient and the Fick diffusion coefficient. Often one can uh, see the assumption that the Maxwell-Stefan uh, diffusion coefficient exhibits a weaker composition dependence. As you can see here, this is generally not the case. Now, let me give you a short overview over a simulation study that we did some time ago um, on these seven components um, where we looked at all binary combinations. So seven component means uh, 21 binary mixtures. And one of these, methanol plus cyclohexane, um, was not included in this particular work because it exhibits a liquid-liquid equilibrium. We use our own molecular models. There's somebody's talking into his microphone. Uh, 
So we have made, used our own molecular models, which are assumed to be rigid bodies. They are interactions are described by Leonard Jones sites, point charges, dipoles, quadrupoles for electrostatics. And the parameters of these models have been uh, exclusively optimized to thermodynamic properties, which are not related to transport, except for one case, I think it was cyclohexane, we, where we used the self-diffusion coefficient. But it's important, we always used pure fluid properties, only never mixture properties. So the mixing behavior was fully predicted. Now, these 20 mixtures, they can be grouped according to their uh, ideality or non-ideality. Uh, so group one is weakly uh, non-ideal or almost ideal. Uh, group two is, is moderately non-ideal. And group three is strongly non-ideal. And all data that you're going to see here are at ambient conditions because that's where uh, we have experimental data if we have any experimental data. Now, benzene plus toluene, uh, you can see here, um, that is the Fick and maxwell stefan diffusion coefficient. Of course, um, in the experiment, we can only access uh, the, the Fick diffusion coefficient because the chemical potential is not measurable. You can see that maxwell stefan and Fick, they basically coincide. And you can see that the comparison is very, very good for this rather uh, simple model. Since these simulations allow access to basically all thermodynamic properties. We can also compute the shear viscosity, thermal conductivity, or the intra diffusion coefficients. And you can see that in some cases, we also have experimental data that corroborate these models and simulations. Now, a moderately non ideal mixture is this acetone plus benzene. Yeah, you can see here the thick diffusion coefficients on the bottom. The upper ones are the Maxwell Stefan diffusion coefficients, for which we cannot uh, compare to experimental data. And here you see also uh, some uh, intradiffusion experiments compared to the intradiffusion uh, results. Uh, just as a reminder, yeah, the picture where I showed you the eight different diffusion coefficients is basically yeah, just a superposition of these two figures here in one plot, but I have chosen to separate them for better visibility. Now, um, the most uh, non-ideal mixture here uh, is methanol plus toluene. Uh, and here you can see that the Fick diffusion coefficient goes to a clear minimum, uh, which is uh, both corroborated experimentally and also by our simulations. And you can see that the Maxwell-Stefan diffusion coefficients, of course, strongly composition dependence and goes here through a maximum. And now we can ask ourselves, where does such a non-ideality come from and how can we understand it? And for this, I would like to come back to the simulation that I showed you before that is this mixture methanol plus a benzene and well actually if you look at this um, at this movie you don't see too much but if you remove just visually remove the benzene molecule to see what the uh, 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 methanol molecules are doing, then you can see that the methanol is highly structured. It uh, builds clusters. These clusters hang together and they basically impede the propagation of individual molecules, individual methanol molecules. And in this way, uh, transport diffusion is much more slowed down as compared to a fully dispersed mixture. Now, we can look at uh, how good are we if you make a statistics overall. I don't want to go in full detail here. Uh, something like 15, 20% is what we can expect of an accuracy as compared to experimental data. Now, if we go to mixtures with more components, three or more, then the Fick diffusion coefficient matrix becomes larger. N minus one times N minus one. So means in the ternary mixtures, we have four Fick coefficients. In a uh, quaternary mixtures, we have nine uh, Fick diffusion coefficient entries. Now, as I said, um, in case of the Fick approach, we always have this reference velocity here. It can be in the volume frame, so averaged on the volume of the mixture or the number of molecules or the mass of the mixture. And then, of course, also the, the diffusion coefficients start uh, to vary. And of course, yeah, the uh, flow of one component is not only determined by its own uh, composition gradient, but it's determined by all composition uh, uh, gradients, which makes uh, this coupling uh, very much visible. Now, this summation goes to uh, n minus one components, and the last component uh, is basically the flux of the reference component is obtained then from a closure. 
uh, you have to note that thick diffusion coefficients uh, do depend, the numbers do depend on the order of components. They can be recalculated, but they do depend. So A plus B plus C is something else, so leads to other numbers than a mixture A plus C plus B and so on. And of course, uh, yeah, the thick diffusion coefficients also depend on the state in terms of temperature, pressure, and composition of the mixture. So when we go over to the Mexel-Stefan uh, uh, approach for mixtures with three and more components, then we can first of all see that we have less coefficients. It's n times n minus one half coefficients because the Onsaga reciprocity holds. Uh, so the matrix is smaller. Uh, with three components, it doesn't make much of a difference, but with four components, it's already relevant. These Maxwell-Stefan coefficients are still determined by the Onsager coefficients in the way that I showed you, independent on the number of components that we look at. And the good news is the Maxwell-Stefan uh, coefficients do not depend on the reference frame, simply because we look at mutual velocities and not velocity with respect to some reference frame. Maxwell-Stefan coefficients also do not depend on the order of components. And... Uh, However, yes, of course, they have to depend on the state and in particular also on the composition. Now, uh, the expression then for these mutual velocities yeah, in an in a n component mixture is then given yeah, by the sum here and uh, on the right hand side, we have the mole fraction gradients as driving forces. Now, the relation between Fick and maxwell stefan in case of multi-component is similar, not exactly identical to what we saw before. It's a matrix uh, uh, product. Basically, the Fick diffusion coefficient uh, is a matrix. The uh, uh, thermodynamic factor is a matrix as well. And this B inverse B matrix here is a matrix which is determined uh, by the maxwell stefan diffusion coefficient matrix. Um, now, let me give you uh, a view on a uh, quaternary mixture from these seven components, methanol, toluene, cyclohexane, acetone. It, we're looking only at one composition. And uh, the good news is that for this mixture recently, last year, from RWTH Aachen, uh, there has been some, some experimental work and the publication contains only one single uh, a data point, that mixture that you see there. And they have um, provided the experimental data that you see here, and we were able to um, re-simulate exactly that mixture. And if you compare the numbers of the uh, thick diffusion uh, matrix elements here, uh, these are nine for a quaternary mixture, and you can see that the comparison is really quite good. Now, let's go to another quaternary mixture that we looked more thoroughly into, and that is water, water methanol, ethanol, 2-propanol. And um, this quaternary mixture, of course, has like three independent composition variables, and we wanted to study it very thoroughly because experimentally, typically, we have very few data for such systems. And here in this case, we were able to look at 10 quaternary points, which are in this uh, red plane here. We also looked at the ternary subsystems and the binary subsystems and the pure fluids as well. And now uh, let us first, of course, check uh, what is with our model. How good does it compare to the experimental data? And in case of the binary subsystems, so water plus methanol, water plus ethanol, water plus propanol, there is some experimental data or even extensive experimental data because that these mixtures are so important. But you can see already at propanol, yeah, there is kind of contradictory experimental data. And uh, independent on that, we are quite confident that this is really excellent uh, description by our model of these of these data. Uh, and uh, also for this binary system, uh, methanol, ethanol, uh, we think that the comparison is quite good for the other two uh, binary mixtures already. We do not find any experimental data in the literature. So going from binaries to ternaries, um, we have, of course, four ternaries. And um, uh, there was actually no experimental data at all for any of these four quater ternary mixtures. And with a, uh, through cooperation with Valentina Shevtsova uh, a few years ago, um, uh, we did a joint work where we looked at the ternary water plus methanol plus ethanol. Um, it's the publication over here. The basic um, uh, information is yes, also in the ternary mix 
mixture, the comparison between simulation and experiment is quite good. We looked at two different paths here uh, through this uh, composition plane. And what you can see here is the, uh, a qualitative view on the Fick diffusion uh, matrix elements, the four, how they look like uh, for this mixture. This is just qualitative. These have been shifted in order to, to allow for a view. And you can see that they have, of course, a clearly uh, very non-trivial behavior in that mixture. Now, the last point that I would like to address here um, before I come to the final results is uh, the issue of the velocity reference frame. Uh, the Fick diffusion coefficients, as I said, they depend on the choice of the velocity reference frame. And for example, if we do simulation, we do it in the molar reference frame. And if you do experiments uh, to measure the Fick diffusion coefficient, you typically use the volume reference frame. And of course, it has to be converted between the two. And the main, uh, the main uh, information that is required for that is the partial molar volume of the components in the mixture as a function of composition. And in order to analyze our mixture uh, on a particularly sound footing, uh, we did density measurements um, uh, in, in this publication that you see uh, down here, which was recently published. For that, we looked at, uh, well, almost 200, not really, but 150 or what uh, state points where we measured the density with a, a, den a vibrating tube, 10 zimeter. And using these data, we were able to make a correlation for the molar volume, which we then have applied to um, transform uh, our simulation data between the reference frames, not only the molar to the volume, but also the molar to the mass reference frame. Now, here is basically the last result file that I want to show you. And these are these 10 points. Yeah, I go back here into this one. These are the 10 quaternary points here in this plane. Yeah, these 10 points, they are not, uh, they are not, uh, um, they, they are simply sorted here according to their value for the uh, yeah, main thick diffusion coefficient um, of component one. So these 10 different state points are here. And what you can see here is different symbols. And these different symbols are the uh, thick diffusion coefficient in the different reference frames. And what you can see here is that, yeah, D11, D22, and D33. So the main elements of the Fick diffusion coefficient matrix, at least for this quaternary mixture, um, they hardly depend, not very much depend on the reference frame. But if we look at the cross elements here, so uh, the, 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 the ones that describe the cross effects, they really do quite uh, strongly depend on the choice of the reference frame. And the point is that um, if one is thinking about um, does a uh, system uh, mix in a, a very contraintuitive way, like for example, does it exhibit uphill diffusion? Often we look at uh, the relation between uh, these cross elements and the main elements. And if the relation is quite big, then these uphill um, or these, these, these cross uh, effects might be quite strong. But as you can see here, is that if you would look, for example, here at the molar reference frame for, for this, uh, for this uh, cross element, then you would see that they're all relatively close to zero. So if you look only at that reference frame, you would believe, okay, there is no cross, uh, no strong cross effect um, expected. But if you look at another reference frame, the situation looks quite different. With this, I would like to close. Multi-component diffusion is, I think, not straightforward. So many different diffusion coefficients there. I believe that the Maxwell-Stefan approach is, is, offers advantages to the FIC approach, and we can use molecular uh, dynamic simulation to, to, to provide understanding and also to predict diffusion coefficient data. And uh, yeah, cross elements that may be considered as negligible in one reference frame can be significant in other reference frame. And when, uh, yeah, uh, uh, effects like uphill diffusion are yeah, estimated based on uh, cross elements, then uh, one uh, should not only look at one uh, distinct reference frame, but one should look at that uh, a little bit more broadly. And with that, I would like to close um, this presentation and uh, I would be happy to answer your questions. Okay. Thank you very much um, for a very interesting presentation. And, and uh, questions, please. Uh, hello, Yadra. Nice to see you. Hello. Uh, what can you say about SORE coefficients or uh, thermal, thermal diffusion coefficients? Uh, 
Uh, how can you measure with Morical simulation? Yeah, uh, yeah. Of course, uh, what you what you need to do there it's basically very similar to 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 what we did here. Um, we need to look at correlation functions, and we have to look uh, at correlations between mass flux and energy flux. Uh, and uh, basically, there is a um, there is a framework which is available, has been derived uh, at least for binary mixtures. The whole thing is kind of totally clear, and um, I'm quite happy uh, that we are currently wor working on a first paper on this topic um, together with colleagues from Stuttgart University, where we are comparing equilibrium molecular dynamics with non-equilibrium molecular dynamics uh, in its computational advantages and disadvantages for uh, doing so. Uh, Professor Rebek, uh, first of all, thank you for a very nice lecture. And I have uh, one question. Could you a little bit extend your model uh, so could you add to your transport equation one term, I mean electromigration term, so to consider not neutral, electroneutral solution, but to consider positive and negative ions and take into account repelling of the ions of the same uh, kind and attracting attraction of a different kind, because we have many I'm doing DNA simulation connected with such uh, electro with Nernst Planck Poisson equations, and we have many questions, and the only one answer is can be from molecular dyna dynamic simulation. That's why my question. yeah yeah. Th th thank you, thank you very much. Actually, I have um, I have done some work on uh, diffusion um, of alkali uh, halide ions in water. It was a self diffusion. So you look, for example, at the self diffusion coefficient of an, of the ion and of the anion and of the uh, water and in, in the mixture, for example, depending on composition. And that indeed is possible. Uh, you you can get such data that that is available and there are people who are doing that on a regular uh, basis. So, so, so getting these numbers is possible. The question, of course, uh, with ionic systems uh, always is how accurate are these data? I would assume that you wouldn't get a 15% accuracy, but you would get an accuracy which may be uh, uh, worse than that. Uh, but at least the qualitative results, um, they are definitely accessible. And, and there is literature on that. 50% is more than enough, I would say. And is it is it in your plans to extend your results for uh, electromigration also in future, I mean? Um, no, not really. Uh, at, present, uh, at present, we are looking at supercritical systems. Uh, there have been already some publications which I didn't talk about today. So supercritical carbon dioxide, how it is influenced by the presence of other components. Um, and uh, well, ions also not that much. Um, this is, this is <coughs> at present not, not, not my plan. And I want to okay. go also into SORET, into the SORET uh, coefficient, of mm. course, binary and then ternary mixtures. Okay, thank you again. Uh, and uh, so there are two more questions. It's uh, Sergei Prokopyev and Valentina Shevtsova. And also Werner. One more question, I think. Okay, Valentina, first your question. Hi, Werner. <laughs> thank you very much for the nice presentation. It's really very nice to, to see you and uh, to listen to your talk. And my question is very uh, philosophical. Uh, when you make simulations, you see clusters. And of course, the clusters, they depend on the diffusion coefficient, the influence. It's a size of molecule is changing. And when the clusters are mostly formed for ideal, non-ideal mixtures, or when uh, of, it depends on hydroxyl group, when they are the most uh, strong? Well, uh, actually, uh, this depends on the interplay between the components. If you, you, you're looking at like the mixture that we looked at, benzene uh, 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 and, and methanol. Methanol feels alien in benzene. It doesn't feel good there. And that's why they, they, they segregate. But if you take the same molecules with the same interaction parameters, the same forces into an environment which is much more 
which is much more comfortable to them, like for example in ethanol, then the same interactions will, will lead to basically a mixture which is fully dispersed. So it's, it's, it's a question of how do the two partners interact with each other? And this mutual unlike interaction, of course, depends on the interaction between the like components. But, but this is the, the main driving, the driving force, the unlike interaction. How is it? Okay, thank you. Okay, Sergey. Okay, uh, as I know from uh, equilibrium molecular dynamics, you use potential like Leonard Jones potential and so on. But uh, I read there is another option to use um, quantum mechanics uh, to directly get forces. Is it much more difficult? Yeah, uh, I mean, uh, look, the, the, basically, I, I'm following now the simulation world for 30 years, uh, and the computers are getting better and better and better. And nowadays, they are really good. And of course, there is up in its your molecular dynamics. So what do you do there? You basically do a density functional theory. So a really kind of like a quantum uh, calculation, which is as efficient as possible in order to save time to get the forces right. You can do that. For example, people in the US have done this already years ago. Also, Caparinello, uh, like 20 years ago, you can do that. Uh, typically, uh, the computational time is, is much, much higher. Uh, but at least you can say that you have a propagated 50 molecules over a, a say a few picoseconds or a, yeah maybe 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 more yeah a few hundred picoseconds to extract for example diffusion coefficient data yes in principle it's possible depends on all the computational power you have but there is from my point of view something quite interesting these days and that is to use um, uh, machine learning that is being fed with quantum data on interactions um, as a kind of uh, surrogate model for quantum chemical calculations that is then yielding quantum a quantum model data uh, for molecular modeling and simulation. So this is something which is kind of would speed that even more up and that could perhaps give us in the future uh, more insight into this more or less or half direct route from quantum to uh, transport properties. Thank you. Okay, and Werner, please. Uh, Yatran, uh, very nice. I, I have a question. When you showed the comparison with your simulation data for the Fick diffusion and the Maxwell Stefan diffusion coefficient with the experimental data, you could compare only with the, for the Fick diffusion coefficient because uh, Maxwell Stefan is not accessible. Uh, yeah, exactly. Now, could you, in principle, take the experimental data and combine them with a thermodynamic factor you calculate from some equation of state, like PC soft, and then uh, compare it with the with the Maxwell Stefan diffusion coefficient? Absolutely, yeah, yes, of course, you can do that. But then, what will happen is you find out that for the really interesting uh, systems, uh, the choice of the model that you take. Uh, very much influences the thermodynamic factor that is coming out. Yeah, yeah I mean, yeah, the, the thermodynamic, mm -hmm. you can, for example, use a model like, let's say, NRTL or, or PCSAFT or, or other models. You can use them to fit, for example, phase equilibrium data that, because that's where it goes into. Phase equilibrium data contains chemical potential information. And so you fit it, you, you find, oh, yeah, my model fits to these phase equilibrium data. Then you extract from this model the, the, the thermodynamic factor. And it turns out that the thermodynamic factor that you receive. Uh, it depends astonishingly strongly on the choice of the model. And, and this is particularly then the case when the non-ideality is large. When, when the systems are quite ideal, then, then typically these differences are not, not so strong. Oh, okay. okay, thank you. Okay. So we have to, unfortunately, we have to stop discussion because we are already in, in the lunch time. Thank you very much again, uh, Yadran, for a very nice presentation. Thank you. And uh, we hope that we will have possibility uh, to hear again the, the talks of uh, Yadran Rabek and also of Pierre Sago. Okay, thank you very much. Now it's lunch time until, until uh, 15 of Perm time. Okay. Uh, Tatiana Petrovna, sorry, now it's time to take a picture. Ah, yes, sorry. Now we have, uh, we uh, 